Hey everybody, Alex Cazora, SteelersDepot.com, back with some Pittsburgh Steelers recap and analysis of Pittsburgh's 20-10 loss over the Jacksonville Jaguars on Sunday. Pittsburgh now 4-3 on the season. Let's talk about it. And quickly before we start, if you guys could like this video, subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate that. Again, it's a similar story as really all these games have kind of blended together of defensive dominance at times and really splash plays being opportunistic. Pittsburgh, three takeaways in this game, a couple of great red zone or red zone fringe uh, moments there. The forced fumble by Quan Alexander, the interception by DeMonte Casey. In the end zone, you get Nick Herbig to force a fumble. That was not a, a deep in Pittsburgh territory type of thing, but still, you know, shortening the game, taking away possessions, giving your offense, generally speaking, some shorter fields, and keeping the score down. All a recipe, all a must, the way the Pittsburgh Steelers are currently construct and uh, constructed. Excuse me. So um, the issue just goes into how long can you sustain and can you beat kind of the quality teams that way by just trying to win on that model and that model alone. And today showed that's not really feasible in Pittsburgh's defense while it certainly played a really good game overall is still prone to the big explosive play as they were on the 56 yard touchdown catch by Travis Etienne look like defensively DeMonte Casey had the issue there but we'll have to go back and check the tape on that Joey Porter Jr. seemed to take some of the blame after the game but yeah defensively it's really hard to be mad about the job that Pittsburgh did I mean you hold a really potent Jags team to 20 points. You have a bend but don't break mentality. Hold to a couple of 50-yard field goals in the rain. Kudos to them and uh, McManus, their kicker, for, for making those. You get those turnovers, and you really do all you can to try to set this thing up for the way that it's gone. When you keep the score down going into the fourth quarter, and you try to win it over the last 15 and really the last five minutes of the game. But, um, you know, that's only going to work so well with the way the offense is. And again, the defense is not blameless in this either. They allowed some chunk plays, some penalties, some questionable, some aren't, uh, some weren't that, that hurt them as well. But I mean, it's hard to really fault this defense too much considering all the splash they made and the you know final point total that Jacksonville was held to. Offensively, obviously the injury to Kenny Pickett and should mention the injury to Minka Fitzpatrick defensively um, as well. Um, you know, don't know his status on a short week for Thursday, did it with Pickett, um, might be a tough turnaround for Minka, especially with a hamstring like that, Pickett might be a bit more of a pain tolerance thing, but, you know, there's a lot of layers that will have to go into that, but yeah, losing Kenny Pickett right before halftime, Trubisky comes in, and to his credit, they let a touchdown drive, it was a good drive overall, Jalen Warren providing a spark, great slant by George Pickens, breaking tackles, again, yeah, going to be something that, that he's really, you know, worked at and gotten so much better at compared to where he was as a rookie, but you have to wonder how George Pickens only has one catch in the game, and that was, uh, you know, the only really positive play, the only play that uh, put the ball in the end zone for Pittsburgh in this one, so I don't know how much of that was game plan or not, but he wondered if there's other ways to, to open that guy up that we're not taking advantage of. Um, with Trubisky, it's typical Jabisky stuff. You get some big plays downfield, live by the sword, die by the sword mentality, and uh, just takes too many risks for an offense that really can't accept those kind of risks uh, when they turn the ball over, even regardless of turnover differential. They were plus one today. Uh, they still lose, and so Trubisky just doesn't really fit that mold of how the Steelers operate in win right now. And, uh, you know, it was picked off officially twice, one being the Hail Mary at the end of the game, but could have been picked off easily, you know, two, three times more uh, in this contest. So run game, non-existent. Again, Pittsburgh, if they can't run the ball, they're turning the football over, stick a fork in it, really doesn't matter what the defense does. They're not going to win. Did not win on Sunday. So really no, no running room for Najee Harris and Jalen Warren and really, you know, just offense unable to sustain, get started. They had four, three and outs to start the game. Didn't get a first down to the second quarter, had zero points in the end of the first quarter, three points by halftime. Uh, they were, what, 3-12 of 12 on third down. They're 7-24 to 24 on third down over the last two weeks. So those type of numbers with the turnovers just really gives you no chance. We'll briefly touch on the refs here, and I think it was a pretty you know miserable performance by them on an overall just kind of blah, rainy day in Pittsburgh. And I don't like to spend too much time on refs, and I'm not you know so well-versed in some of the rulings, but certainly things look questionable. You know, I think Kenny Pickett could have, you know, gotten a roughing the passer call, uh, you know, his way on on the play that he got hurt, the field goal or the offsides, which is a funky term for it, that wiped out the Boswell 56-yard field goal at the end of the half. No idea what happened there. Mike Tomlin seemed completely stunned by the the flag there. Um, and probably other stuff that I'm not even able to think about right now. Um, but yeah, Deontay Johnson unhappy about the refs. He made comments to that. 
after the game, that's going to probably earn him a pretty hefty fine from the NFL to make those kind of accusations. But yeah, overall, the refs, I thought, were were really poor, but I'm not going to use that as the excuse because Pittsburgh's offense has looked like this the entire season. And if you want to give him three points for the Boswell field goal, you can. Pittsburgh still loses that game. So, you know, that that's just the, the math of it all. So a lot to react to, a lot of tape to go through pretty quickly. Pittsburgh with a tight turnaround road Thursday game against Tennessee to kick off week number nine. Tennessee haven't really watched their game. No Will Levis threw four touchdowns. They beat the Falcons. So, um, you know, it might be a rookie starting, but he didn't play like a rookie in his debut against Atlanta on Sunday. So Pittsburgh's going to have the work cut out for them. Um, it's really the same stuff overall. Just really slow starts offensively. Defense trying to make as many plays as possible. Create splash and, you know, can you sustain? I don't think that's sustainable. I've called Pittsburgh a fragile team and today really showed it. So wrap things up here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Appreciate you guys watching. Again, please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. Stay with Steelers Depot for all the coverage and analysis of this game and getting you ready for Tennessee. Thank you for watching and we'll talk to you soon.